open with prayer. Thanks for waking us up and gathering us here together. Danke, dass du uns aufgeweckt hast und uns hier zusammengebracht hast. Thanks for the opportunity to study your word and to keep the world worldliness away. Danke für die Möglichkeit, dein Wort zu studieren und Weltlichkeit zur Seite zu legen. Please let us see what you want to show us. Bitte hilf uns zu sehen, was du uns zeigen möchtest. Bitte hilf uns, die Sündhaftigkeit der Sünde zu sehen. So we keep distance to our sinful heart. Dass wir Abstand halten zu unserem sündhaftigen Herz. And draw nearer to you. Und näher zu dir kommen. Because you told us that if we do so, you will get nearer to us. Denn du hast gesagt, wenn wir so tun, dann wirst du auch näher zu uns kommen. Please now bless Brother Mark while he presents. Bitte segne nun Bruder Mark, wenn er präsentiert. And also the translation and the technique. Und auch die Übersetzung und die Technik. And everyone who's listening to your live stream. Und jeder, der zuhört über den Livestream. And thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Danken dir in Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen. Okay, um, the notes are in the live stream and the film and quotes are there also. Also in English there are also notes and the French quotes. Okay, so just been thinking about this uh, topic that we've been looking at over the last couple of days. <laughs> Und ich habe einfach auch mal über das Thema nachgedacht, was wir uns angeschaut haben in den letzten Tagen. So, I just want to give you some thoughts on that this morning. Ich möchte euch ein paar Gedanken dazu geben. Okay, so, um, let's begin uh, by going to Psalm 48. Beginnen wir, indem wir zu Psalm 48 gehen. In Vers 1. In Vers 1. It says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. So what does it say here about Jerusalem? Also was sagt es hier über Jerusalem? Yes, but specifically about uh, how would how would what does it look like? It's beautiful, right? It says it's beautiful. It's the joy of the whole earth, right? So, in this, what it's saying here, there's no place as beautiful as Jerusalem, right? And we were looking at this woman the other day. What's the, what does the, uh, the, the, the wise look like? She's fair to look upon, right? Okay. This is why uh, the, the, the king uh, Ahasuerus wanted to bring Vashti in because he wanted to parade his his wife before all the kings of the earth, right? Right? And what's his who's his bride? The holy city, right? So and in Psalm 48, who's coming and looking at Mount Zion? 
Und in Psalm 48, wer kommt und schaut auf den Berg Zion? Like all the kings of the earth, right? Also all die Könige der Erde. And when they look upon her, what happens? Und wenn sie auf sie schauen, was, was passiert dann? Fear comes upon them, right? Furcht kommt über sie. Okay, so it's the same illustration, right? When this portraying his bride before the whole world, this is them seeing the bride, right? This this beautiful city and great fear comes upon them, right? Und das eben dasselbe, diese, dass man das eben als wäre das eben seine, seine Frau sozusagen hergezeigt hat, das ist auch eben, wenn diese Könige diese Frau sehen und eben Furcht auf ihr Herz kommt. Okay, but we know that there's two Jerusalems, right? Aber wir wissen ja, es gibt zwei Jerusalems. Yes? There's this false one that's going to be destroyed and there's the true one that everybody's going to fear. Also da ist dieses Falsche, was zerstört wird und das Wahre, wo, wo für, um, vor, vor welcher sich eben jeder fürchten wird. Okay, let's go to the next quote from, or the first quote from Great Controversy. Gehen wir jetzt zum um, ersten Zitat. It says, from the crest of Oliver, Jesus looked upon Jerusalem. Fair and peaceful was the scene, spread out before him. It was the season of the Passover. And from all the lands, the children of Jacob had gathered there to celebrate the great national festival. In the midst of gardens and vineyards and green slopes studded with pilgrim tents rose the terraced hills, the stately palaces and massive bulwarks of Israel's capital. The daughter of Zion seemed in her pride to say, I said a queen and shall see no sorrow. As lovely then... And deeming herself as secure in heaven's favor as when ages before the royal minstrel sang. So how does she view herself? Also wie sie, sieht sie sich selbst? A queen that's going to see no sorrow. She's got nothing to fear, right? Also die Königin, sie sieht ja keine Sorge und sieht nichts zu fürchten. Right, it says... Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, the city of the great king. In full view were the magnificent buildings of the temple. The rays of the setting sun lighted upon the snowy whiteness of its marble, marble walls and gleamed from golden gate and tower and pinnacle. The perfection of beauty. It stood the pride of the Jewish nation. What child of Israel could gaze upon the scene without a thrill of joy and admiration? Amen? So, it's illustrating or it's typifying the, the New Jerusalem, this, this beautiful city that the whole world is going to fear, right? Also, das typifiziert eben dieses neue Jerusalem, eben das, wovor sich alle Nationen fürchten werden. Okay. Next quote from the side of Ages 741. It says, That he might sanctify the people with his own blood, Christ suffered without the gate. For transgression of the law of God, Adam and Eve were banished from Eden. Christ, our substitute, was to suffer without the boundaries of Jerusalem. He died outside the gate where felons and murderers were executed. So what's, what is the gate of Jerusalem being paralleled with? Right, so what's Jerusalem? Eden, right? It's a type of Eden. It's this beautiful city, right? Okay. Um, so, go... Now to Genesis chapter 2. It says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So what does this illustrate? So what illustrates this? Yes, the, the new birth. And therefore, what is it? Also die neue Geburt und was ist es deswegen? Come on, don't forget, I'm always leading. So what have we dis been discussing? Also, über was haben wir bis jetzt geredet? No, I've not been talking about creation. What, what have we been talking about just before this? Jerusalem. Okay, Jerusalem. So what's Jerusalem? Who is Jerusalem? 
Also, wer ist Jerusalem? It's his bride, right? Es ist seine Braut. So, this God demonstrates the end by the beginning, right? Und Gott demonstriert das Ende durch den Anfang. So, where else do we see this in the Bible? Also, wo sehen wir das noch in der Bibel? This in Genesis. So, das in 1. Mose. Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37, right? So, what's it marking? When God's people stand on their feet, a mighty great army, what does the world do? Right, it's, fear. it's the exact same illustration, right? Okay, it says, so the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed. Right, so what do we see? Also, was sehen wir hier? He has you. You're going into this. You go into this city, right? Because in Matthew 25 and verse 23, his Lord said unto him, "Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things." What's he going to make him? Ruler, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. What's the joy of the Lord? The great city, right? So where, where is he entering into? Eden, right? This is what you said, the man, the formed man from the dust of the ground and put him in the garden of Eden, right? Und es hat ja gesagt, dass er den Menschen geformt hat aus dem Stab des Bodens und ihn ins Eden gesetzt hat. Yes, no, no, I'm not denying that, right? That's why he says, enter into the, the joy, right? In Jerusalem ist ja auch die Freude sozusagen, deswegen sagt es auch, die einen in die Freude des Herrn. But you're missing the point, I'm trying to show that they're both the same thing, right? Because the holy city, it says, Sister White says, the holy city is the bride, cannot be God's people, right? Sister White says that the holy city, if the bride is the holy city, it's not God's people. She says that very clearly. Right? Sister White sagt eben, dass wenn um, die heilige Stadt eben die Braut ist, dann kann das nicht Gottes Volk sein. Right? But she's not, she's just trying to get us to understand there's a difference between the people and the literal holy city. Right? Aber sie möchte uns einfach zu verstehen geben, dass da ein Unterschied ist zwischen dem Volk, sozusagen Gottes Volk und der Heiligen Stadt. Okay, but in another sense, the people are his bride. The, the, the two things that have to be brought, brought together, right? Aber in einem anderen Sinne ist eben Gottes Volk eben auch die Braut. Das sind einfach zwei Sachen, die zusammengebracht werden. Okay, but so Christ's kingdom is going to make up a city. He be the king and we are his subjects, if we're faithful, right? Aber Christi Königreich ist einfach dass, ähm, ja, wenn wir treu sind, dass er dann der König ist und wir sozusagen seine Untertanen. Okay. So, the, part, the point I want you to... Ja, also, das Königreich ist die Stadt und wir auch als Untertanen. Okay. Okay, also, ähm, die Stadt ist quasi dann der König und wir sind die Untertanen. Oder? No, 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 the king, king is the ruler. King, the king has a kingdom, right? Yeah. Just, just repeat this question. So, I, he's the king, and he is the king over the city. Yeah. Right, that's his kingdom. But he has subjects, that's the people. So there's three yeah. things, the king, kingdom, and subjects. Okay. Also in diesem Königreich ist es dann, dass Christus der König ist, und wie die Untertanen, oder? The city. The city is the kingdom. Okay. Also, das Königreich ist eben die Stadt. Okay, so that, that's what makes up a, a kingdom, right? A, a kingdom, a piece of land is, is not a kingdom unless it has a king ru ruling over it, right? So he has a, he has a subject, territory, and a king ruling over it. But anyway, so, and go to uh, Revelation 21. Jetzt gehen wir zu Offenbarung 21. And verse 16. And verse 16. Okay, and this is speaking about the, the New Jerusalem. 
It says, and the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth, and he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth of it and height of it are equal. So how is, how is the holy city here measured? Also, wie wird die heilige Stadt hier gemessen? What? Furlongs, right? Furlongs is the measurement used for it, right? Also, Stadien. Das okay. ist eben das, was benutzt wird, um das zu messen. So. Okay, so, the holy city, right, we just, it's four square, right, so it's this square, right, and it is the garden. Right? Okay, and it's measured by furlongs. Okay. So anyway, now the other day I was reminding us that the destruction of Jerusalem, false Jerusalem, is also the destruction of Babylon, right? So let's go to Revelation 18 and verse 7. It says, How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I set a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. What does she say? Also, was sagt sie? The same as what Jerusalem says, right? Now the same as Jerusalem says. Sits there in her pride and thinks there's nothing can affect me, right? Also, she sits there in her stolz and thinks that she doesn't have anything to do. Okay, let's, let's read about this, about uh, Nebuchadnezzar, who's the king over this city. Und jetzt lesen wir über Nebukadnezar, welcher der König ist über diese Stadt. Von Propheten und Kings 5 und 4. Von Propheten und Königen. Ah, okay, yes, sorry, just before we read that, go to Isaiah 13. Und vor dem gehen wir zu Jesaja 13. And verse 19. Und Vers 19. It says, And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So how does it liken Babylon? Also, mit was vergleicht es Babylon? Yes, the glory of kingdoms, right? It's the most beautiful city in the world. Also, mit der Herrlichkeit der Königreiche, also ist das Schönste auf der Welt. Okay, so hence you can see how there's this this is a comparison between this, the kingdom of Babylon and the kingdom of Jerusalem, right? Und deswegen ist auch dieser Vergleich eben zwischen Königreich von Babylon und um, Jerusalem. Okay, so let's read Prophets and Kings now. <coughs> und jetzt lesen wir das Zitat von Prophet und Könige. It says, Nebuchadnezzar's noble conception of God's purpose concerning the nations was lost it was lost sight of later in his experience. So, if he lost sight of it, what did he have prior to that? So, when he lost sight of it, what had he done before him? He could see. Yeah, he, he had a noble conception of God's purpose, right? Also, he had a high vision of God's purpose for his people. It said, yet when his proud heart was humbled before the multitude on the plain of Jura, he once more had acknowledged that God's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. An idolater by birth and training, and at the head of an idolatrous people, he had nevertheless an innate sense of justice and right, and God was able to use him as an instrument for the punishment of the rebellious and for the fulfillment of the divine purpose. So, how was he, how was it illustrated as him punishing the rebellious? We went through this no. also, wie ist das last two days. Illustriert, dass er eben diese Rebellion bestraft. 
when we read about this, Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, and Zedekiah, they all took an oath. And what did they all do in turn? So Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, and Zedekiah have all swore. Yeah, they all rebelled, right? Sie haben dann aber alle rebelliert. And we see that we were shown this in this parallel, right? So you, you have Jehoiakim. Jehoiachin and Zedekiah. And Zedekiah marks the destruction of Jerusalem, right? Also we have Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin and Zedekiah. Zedekiah markiert ja diese Zerstörung von Jerusalem. Okay, but Jehoiakim marked the beginning of the 70 years in captivity, right here, right? Aber Jehoiakim hat eben Zum Beginn dieser 70 Jahre, den markiert er. So th this is when they go into Babylon, right? Das ist, wenn sie nach Babylon gehen. Because you have this three years where Jehoiakim first becomes his subject, but he after three years he, he rebels, right? Und zuvor haben wir eben diese drei Jahre, wo eben Jehoiakim untertan wird. Okay, but then he gets taken to Babylon in fetters and then he gets released again, he renews his oath, right, and then that's when the, the captivity begins, right? So, okay, so Babylon has a king, right? And this king has an innate sense of justice, right? Und Babylon hat ja einen König und dieser hatte eben einen, einen guten Sinn für Gerechtigkeit. And we know that the Lord sets up kings and he takes down kings, right? Und der setzt der Könige auf und bringt sie auch wieder nieder. Okay, just, just remind us, I'll go to Romans chapter 13. Und gehen wir zu Römer 13. Verse 1. It says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So what was Nebuchadnezzar? He's ordained, right? Also von Gott eingesetzt. So, when, when you go into Babylon, or in the past, when they went into Babylon right here, they were under the king that was in God's stead, right? Und als sie eben hier nach Babylon gebracht wurden, waren sie eben unter diesem König, der sozusagen von Gott eingesetzt war. It says, whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God, to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. And this is what he did right here. He executed judgment, right? Das ist eben auch, was er hier getan hat. Er hat Gericht ausgeführt. Which was typified here when Jehoiakim was taken to Babylon in Fedos, right? Das eben typifiziert war hier, als eben Jehoiakim nach Babylon gebracht wurde. Everybody follow? Okay. Right. So, um, let's go to this next quote. It's from the pioneers, and it's from Signs of the Times. It's very interesting when you read this. Right? It says, with the exception of Jerusalem, 
There is more said about Babylon in the Bible than there is about any other city or power in the world. So even the pioneers, they recognize that Jerusalem and Babylon are these two main cities that's, that's spoken about in the Bible, right? Und auch die Pioniere haben das eben erkannt, dass Babylon, Jerusalem, so zwei hauptsächlichen in, ja, Städte sind, worüber eben die Bibel spricht. In the history it occupies a large place, in the prophecies a much larger place. In the time of Isaiah, she was called the Lady of Kingdoms, right? So that's the, the, the Kingdom of Kingdoms, right? Also das ist dieses Königreich der Königreiche. Amen? Amen? Okay. Isaiah himself called her the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency and the golden city. Jeremiah called it the praise of the whole earth. Herodotus, who lived about 484, 430 uh, BC, says of it, The city stands on a broad plain and is an exact square. How is it? As a square. It's four square, right? It's is four A hundred and twenty furlongs in length. How is it measured? In furlongs, right? In stadium. 120 furlongs in length each way, so that the entire circuit is 480 furlongs. While such is its size and magnificence, there is no other city that approaches to it. It is surrounded in the first place by a broad and deep moat full of water, behind which rises a wall 50 royal cubits in width and 200 in height. The royal cubit is longer by three fingers. So, what's the comparison here between Babylon and Jerusalem? Also, what's the Vergleich here between Babylon and Jerusalem? They're both, no, this is what I've just read. They're both built by what? Also, they sind beide gebaut by was? Built, Margaret. For long is a, is, is a distance. They're both built by the royal cubit. Okay, in that time they were just cubits that they were using, but here they built it by the royal cubit, right? Same as Jerusalem. And of its walls and fortresses, Nebuchadnezzar, the great king of Babylon, says, Imgur Bel and Nivet Bel, the great walls of Babylon, I built them square. I repaired with bitumen and bricks the sides of the ditches that had been dug. I caused to be put in order the double doors of bronze and the railings and the gratings and the great gateways. I enlarged the streets of Babylon so as to make them wonderful. I applied myself to the protection of Babylon and Vail Sagatu, the pyramid. And on the most elevated lands, close to the great gate, gate of Ishtar, I constructed strong fortresses of bitumen and bricks from the banks of the Euphrates down to the great gate, the whole extent of the streets. I established their foundations below the level of the waters. I fortified these walls with art. I caused Imgur Bel, the great wall of Babylon, the impregnable such as no king before me had made to be measured 4,000 Mahar Gaga, right, whatever that is. This measurement, says Lenormand, corresponds exactly with the 480 steeds, 60 miles, given by Herodotus as the circuit. Ancient history of the East, Book 4, Chapter 5, da da da, etc., etc. So, it was 15 miles on each square so 15 miles each wall was long this perfect square 60 miles all the way around that's some size right also 15 miles war jede Seite dieser Mauer okay so the city as stated above lay in the form of a square 15 miles on each side making 60 miles around it it was surrounded by a wall 350 feet high about 85 feet thick at the top, that's, a, that's a, an immense wall, right? 350 feet, can't imagine that. Okay. 
On top of the wall, at irregular intervals, were built towers to guard the most accessible parts. Of these towers, there were 250. The open space on the wall within line of these towers was of sufficient breadth to allow a four-horse chariot to turn with safety. Twenty-five gates pierced the wall on each side, making 100 gates in all in the outer wall. These were double gates of solid brass with brazen lintels and posts and fastened with bars of iron. Around the wall on the outside ran a moat corresponding in width and depth to the greatness of the wall. Under the wall and diagonally through the city from corner to corner so as to obtain the great length of water ran the river Euphrates. On each side of the river inside of the city was built a strong wall. Now, where did the river Euphrates, where do we first read about the river Euphrates? Also, wo lesen wir zuerst über den Fluss Euphrates? Yeah. In Eden. Eden. Also in Eden. Right. That's no accident that the river Euphrates runs right through the middle of Babylon. And Babylon was the area where Eden is first marked, right? Und das ist kein Zufall, dass eben genau dieser Fluss Euphrat auch durch Babylon geflossen ist. Und das ist eben, um, Babylon war ja an dieser Stelle, wo ja Eden okay. war. Um, on each side of the river, inside of the city was built a strong wall, each wall pierced with 25 gates opening into the streets that ran from the outer gates. These were also brazen gates like those in the outer wall. The banks of the river were lined throughout with brick laid in bitumen, with sloping landing places at the gates. Boats were always ready at these landing places by which to pass from side to side of the river. Over the river, about the middle of the city, was a drawbridge 30 feet wide, supported on stone piers. At the two ends of the bridge were the two grand palaces of the city. Of course, the vast area within the city was not built up solidly with houses, as is a modern city. There were gardens, orchards and fields interspersed among the houses and about the palaces and temples. It was expected that if ever the city should be besieged, they could grow sufficient provisions within the walls to support the population, so that they might shut their gates, man the towers and dwell securely with no fears of ever being overcome by any besieging force. And that was the same with Jerusalem. Right. Und das war auch dasselbe mit Jerusalem. They had means of hoarding great amounts of food in Jerusalem, but it was only because they stole it all. <laughs> and the, the, the warring factions, uh, it basically got destroyed because of this. Also sie hatten eben auch Mittel, dass sie viel, viel Nahrung eben... In Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Ja, in Jerusalem hatten sie eben auch viele Mittel, dass sie eben viel Nahrung lagern konnten. But they... The, the warring factions, the, these different tribes within the city, they, they stole it and... Okay. Aber es war dann einfach, dass die verschiedenen um, Stämme sich einander bestohlen haben. Und, yes. yeah. It says if, it, if they hadn't done that, they could have lasted for years and not worried about starvation. Und hätten sie eben das nicht gemacht, dann hätten sie über mehrere Jahre hinweg eben da leben können und sie hätten nicht verhungert. It says the houses were mostly three or four stories high, magnificently built, and both houses and grounds grandly adorned. Its temple were marvels of architecture, and most richly furnished, and its temple of bell and its hanging gardens were among the wonders of the world. So what were the hanging gardens of Babylon? The wonders of the world, right? The spoils of Nineveh, Jerusalem and Egypt had enriched it. Its armies had swept like a torrent over the finest countries of the east. The arts, the sciences driven from Phoenicia and Egypt were centered here. And hither the philosophers of the west came to imbibe instruction. The astronomers of Babylon were the leading ones of the world in our time. The following quotation from Rawlinson gives a just view of Babylon's place in regard to the arts and sciences. Amen. Amen. So we can see the comparison between Babylon and Jerusalem, right? 
Also wir können diese, diesen Vergleich, diese Verbindung sehen zwischen Babylon und Jerusalem. And those hanging gardens of Babylon are just a shadow of the once former Garden of Eden, right? Und diese hängenden Gärten von Jerusalem, das ist eben nur ja, von Babylon, ist nur eine, eine Darstellung eben von diesem einstigen Eden. Okay, so when Jehoiakim, right, right here, he took an oath, right, with Nebuchadnezzar. Und Jehoiakim hier hat ja einen, einen Schwur gemacht mit Nebuchadnezzar. So what's the oath in the Bible? Was ist dieser Schwur in der Bibel? It's not just a curse. It's a, the oath uh, is covenant. the covenant, right? Also das ist dieser Punkt. It's both blessings and cursings. It's cursings if you disobey it. It's blessings if you <coughs> o- obey it, right? Und das ist eben ein Fluch für dich, wenn du dem nicht gehorst, und ein Segen, wenn du schon gehorst. Okay, so you can see that by taking an oath with uh, <coughs> Nebuchadnezzar, they were actually taking an oath with whom? Und als sie eben diesen Schwur gemacht haben mit Nebuchadnezzar, wem haben sie deinen Schwur eigentlich gemacht? With Christ, right? Christus. Who sets up kings and takes down kings. Denn er setzt der Könige ein und setzt sie auch ab. So, now let's go to Ezekiel 17. Und jetzt gehen wir zu Ezekiel 17. Vers 1. Und Vers 1. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, put forth a riddle, and speak a parable unto the house of Israel, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, A great eagle, with great wings, long-winged, full of feathers, which had diverse colors, came unto Lebanon, and took the highest branch of the cedar. So, who, who historically, who comes to Jerusalem right here? Also, historisch gesehen, wer kommt da zu Jerusalem? No, Nebuchadnezzar, right? Also Nebuchadnezzar. And he's got this, this multicolored, he's represented this multicolored eagle, right? Und er ist eben dargestellt durch diesen vielfarbigen Adler. Okay, we spoke about this last night, the multicolors represent the covenant. Und wir haben darüber schon gesprochen, dass eben diese vielen Farben, die stellen diesen Bund da. It says, he cropped off the top of his young twigs and carried it into a land of traffic. He set it in a city of merchants. He took also the seed of the land and planted it in a fruitful field. So this is, under Jehoiakim, the seed get taken to Babylon, right? Okay, so here we have Babylon, four square, right? And this the Garden of Eden. So they're being taken into this garden of Eden and they're being planted, right? Okay, he placed it by great waters and set it as a willow tree. And it grew and became a spreading vine of low stature whose branches turned towards him. The roots thereof were under him. So it became a vine and brought forth branches and shot forth sprigs. So you can see that this is an illustration of entering into the joy of thy Lord, right? Wir können also sehen, dass das eine Darstellung ist von dem, dass man eben in diese Freude des Herrn eingeht. So, in type, the false Jerusalem is destroyed here, and you enter in to the land, which is a type of Eden. Also, im Typus ist dieses falsche Jerusalem hier zerstört, und du gehst eben in dieses Land ein, was Eden ist. Right? So Babylon, right? So when you you get to this point, you become the church of heaven on earth, right? Und wenn du eben zu diesem Punkt kommst, dann bist du eben diese Gemeinde des Himmels auf Erden. So what's represented heaven on earth? Und was stellt das da Himmel auf Erden? Babylon, right? Also Babylon. Which has been likened unto the, the Garden of Eden, right? It's important that we, we understand this, right? What, what's taking place here. So, now, just go to Matthew chapter 11. In fact, 
let's let's go just keep your place, Matthew eleven. Go to Daniel two and verse forty eight first. Um to ask in your to Daniel two and verse forty eight. Um after I just want to show you this principle. Right? It says then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon. Right? So when, when are you made this ruler over the land? Also wann wirst du zu diesem Herrn über, den, über das Land gemacht? No, no, that's... When? Wann ist das? Okay, there's lots of places on, on the, it's principally, it's, it's after, at the end of the time of trial, right? Und im Prinzip ist es eben am Ende der Zeit der Trübsal. Yeah, yeah, yes? Okay, so after every time of trouble, you enter into the land. There's this principle there, right? Also nach jeder Zeit der Trübsal gehst du eben in dieses Land ein, ist dieses Prinzip. So, you're made ruler over the land right there, right? Und du wirst da eben hergemacht über dieses Land. The land of Babylon. Und das ist dieses Land von Babylon. Okay, so it's typifying this experience of you entering the land. You become the, the ruler of this kingdom, right? Es typifiziert eben diese Erfahrung, dass man eben ins Land eingeht und du wirst eben hergemacht über das ganze Land. Because Christ is going to make you joint ruler with him on his throne, right? Und Christus macht dich ja dann um, zum Korregent. Um, yeah. Okay, so the fact is you're still on earth, right? Hence, Babylon is the Garden of Eden, but it's typifying it, right? Also, du bist noch immer auf Erden, sozusagen, aber, also in Babylon, aber es typifiziert das halt. Typifying you going into the holy city, right? Es typifiziert, dass du eben diese heilige Stadt Everybody see that? <coughs> okay. Yeah, yes, we, we'll come to that's why we'll go back to uh, Matthew chapter 11. Verse 29. Verse 29. It says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So this this point here marks the baptism, right? So at the baptism, what are you taking upon yourself? The, the yoke, right? Because you're now entering into service. What do you become right there? Yeah, the anointed one, right? Which is also the shepherd. So when you get this place right here and you become... When you come to this place right here and you become this... this king over this thing. You are the great shepherd, right? You are to shepherd the sheep. Und wenn du eben hier hinkommst und König wirst, für dieses ganze Reich, dann wirst du eben zu diesem Hirten und du musst diese Schafe weiden. So, I don't know if you're getting this point, but the, the illustration shows huge, huge responsibilities, right? Die, also die Illustration hier, die zeigt einfach große Verantwortlichkeit. Right? Okay, so, but go to this next quote from Four Testimonies. Let's go to this next Zitat aus It says, God had said that people should be saved, that the yoke he would lay upon them should be light. Okay, so referring to what? Ma the book of Matthew. So, that's specific of Matthew's. It says, if they submitted uncomplainingly to his plan, their servitude was represented by a yoke of wood, which was easily borne, but resistance 
would be met with corresponding severity, represented by the yoke of Ayah. God designed to hold the king of Babylon in check that there should be no loss of life nor galling oppression, but by scorning his warning and commands, they brought upon themselves the full rigor of bondage. Right? So when right here, when you get baptized, if you don't keep on that, that yoke of wood, what's going to be brought upon you? Wenn du eben hier getauft wirst und dieses hölzerne Joch eben dann trägst, was, was musst du... Wenn du es nicht trägst. Oh, um, okay, wenn du es jetzt nicht trägst, was, was kommt dann auf dich? Das eiserne Joch. Okay, so, so as long as you maintain that wooden yoke, you're okay, but if you take off that wooden yoke, right, the iron yoke is going to come upon you, right? Und sobald du eben dieses hölzerne Joch trägst, ist sozusagen alles gut, aber wenn du das eben dann... Ja, ablegst, dann kommt, kommt das eiserne Joch auf dich. Okay, so what is the wooden yoke? Und das ist das hölzerne Joch. It's the cross, right? It's das Kreuz. Sister White has a quote which she actually said it, but I couldn't find it. Und Schwester White hat da auch so ein Zitat zu geschrieben. Ach, auf der Kamera. Yes, that, that's, that, that, that's true, that's, that's another thought. But. Und das ist auch eben diese Bundeslade, die du auf deinen Schultern trägst. So Christ says, pick up your cross and follow me, right? Christus sagt dir, um, nimm dein Kreuz auf dich und folge mir. So when he's baptized, that's his first birth, he knows he's got to go and be born again. Right? He's got to have this, this baptism on the cross. Und Christus wurde ja hier getauft und er hat gewusst, dass er eben nochmal getauft werden muss durch diese Taufe am Kreuz. And why does he know that? Und warum weiß er das? Because Deuteronomy 48 says, when they go into the kingdom, they're going to forget God. And therefore, the iron yoke is going to be brought upon them, right? Und denn in 5. Mose 4 bis 8 steht eben, dass sie den Herrn eben vergessen werden und dieses eiserne Joch auf sie kommt. Okay, so go to Jeremiah 29. Und jetzt gehen wir zu Jeremia 29. And verse 4. Und Vers 4. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Right? And that captivity began right here. Right? Build ye houses, and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. Right? So they were told to build houses, to dwell in them, to plant gardens, and eat the fruit. Right? Also ihnen wurde gesagt, dass sie Häuser bauen sollen, darin wohnen sollen und eben Garten pflanzen sollen und davon essen sollen. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof ye shall have peace. So when you were to go into this city, what kind of experience were you to have? Right. Time of peace, right? Okay. But go to verse 10. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years shall be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work towards you in causing you to return to this place. Right? So they had to go through the whole experience in order to return to Jerusalem. Right? Und sie mussten durch diese ganze Erfahrung eben gehen, damit sie umkehren konnten nach Jerusalem. But there was false prophets trying to deceive them that they didn't have to go through that whole experience, right? Okay, but I just want to show you a comparison now. Now go to Isaiah 65. And verse 17. Vers 17. It says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, 
nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. So it's speaking about the new city, right? And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days, for the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat of the fruit of them. What do we just read? Same as what they were to do when they went into Babylon. So right here, when you go into captivity, it's typifying the resurrections, typifying entering into the joy of the Lord, right? Wenn du eben hier hinkommst und in dieses Land eingehst, dann stellt das eben diese Auferstehung an, wenn du da, wenn du eben diese Freude des Herrn eingehst. But you're still on this earth, right? Und du bist noch immer auf dieser Erde. Yeah, you're not going. It's just it's going to be a prosperous time for you, but you're to wear that wooden yoke, right? Also es wird eine Zeit der Fülle für dich sein, aber du musst trotzdem noch immer dieses hölzerne Joch tragen. Because if you don't, if you forget and take off that yoke and start enjoying the pleasures for a season, you're going to forget God, right? Then when you das eben nicht tust und dieses hölzerne Joch eben ablegst und stattdessen eben ja eine schöne Zeit hast in dem Sinne, dann dann you will forget God. Und dann wird man eben Gott vergessen. So, what was their purpose? Why, why did the Lord put them in Babylon? Und was war der Zweck? Okay, so that's your purpose. That's the purpose of this time of peace is to be a light to the whole world, right? Also that's the Zweck dieser kleinen Zeit des Friedens, dass du eben ein Licht bist für die ganze Welt. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, now let's look at Egypt because it's the exact same comparison, right? Jetzt schauen wir uns Ägypten an, denn da ist auch genau dasselbe Vergleich. Okay, let's go to Ezekiel 29. Prophetically marking the same point in time. Prophetisch markiert es eben demselben Zeitpunkt. Verse 18. Vers 18. Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, caused his army to serve a great service against Tyrus. Every head was made bald, and every shoulder was peeled. Yet he had no wages, nor his army, for Tyrus, for the service that he had served against it. So... Tyre had just been destroyed, right? Also, Tyrus wurde zerstört. And Tyre is a type of Babylon. Und Tyrus ist ja ein Typus für Babylon. So the destruction of Babylon is the destruction of? Also die Zerstörung von Babylon ist die Zerstörung von? Jerusalem, right? So the destruction of Jerusalem, destruction of Babylon is represented this false, right, being destroyed. Und die Zerstörung von Babylon und die Zerstörung von Jerusalem stellt eben da, dass, ja, dass diese Falschen zerstört werden. Okay, but when the false is destroyed, you enter into the land, right? Aber wenn eben das Falsche zerstört wird, dann gehst du eben in dieses Land ein. Right? Okay, so it says here, um, verse 19. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt unto Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. So Tyre is destroyed, and now what's been given? Also, Tyrus is zerstört, and what's been given? The land, right? And this land. And in this case, it's Egypt, right? And in this case, it's Egypt. And he shall take a multitude, and take a spoil, and take a prey, and it shall be the wages for his army. I have given him the land of Egypt for his labor, wherewith he served against it, because they wrought for me, saith the Lord God. In that day I will cause the horn of the house of Israel to bud forth, and I will give thee the opening of the mouth in the midst of them. So right here, when the seed is taken into Babylon, they begin to bud forth, right? Also here, when this Samen nach Babylon gebracht wird, then sprossen sie eben hervor. And what's the point, the purpose of them budding forth according to verse 21? And what's the Zweck, that they even have forsprossen in verse 21? 
Come on, what's the... What, it says it right there. What? Yeah, so you can be his mouthpiece in the midst of them, right? So dass du eben Gottes Mundstück sein kannst in der Mitte von ihnen. So where is he taking you into? Also wo bringt er dich hin? Into the Garden of Eden, right? In den Garten Eden. It's the same illustration. You know, you see it real clear, right? So das ist einfach dieselbe Darstellung. So when you go into the Garden of Eden, you're to put on the wooden yoke, but you're going to be his mouthpiece, right? Also wenn du in diesen Garten Eden eingehst, dann musst du dieses hölzerne Joch tragen, aber du bist auch Gottes Mundstück. Go to Genesis 41, verse 41. Und gehen wir jetzt zu 1. Mose 41, und Vers 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. What was Daniel set over? Über was wurde Daniel gesetzt? All the land of Babylon, right? That's the same, right? So I can just write here, Egypt. Okay. So, let's go to Genesis 47 and verse 1. Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brethren and their flocks and their herds and all that they have are come out of the land of Canaan and behold they are in the land of Goshen and he took some of his brethren even five men and presented them unto Pharaoh and Pharaoh said unto his brethren what is your occupation and they said unto Pharaoh thy servant are what shepherds when did you become a shepherd in verse 2 and from to this when you become the anointed one, right? Wenn du eben diese Gesalbte wirst. Okay, and then you enter into the land. Right? Und dann gehst du in das Land ein. Thy servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. They said moreover unto Pharaoh, For to sojourn in the land are we come. For thy servants have no pasture for their flocks. What does it remind you of? An was erinnert euch das? The lost sheep, right? What do the lost sheep not have? Was haben die nicht? No pasture. Sie haben keine Weide. He says, ah, just, go, just go to Ezekiel 34. Um, gehen wir zu Ezekiel 34. It tells you this point right here. Und er sagt es uns das. Verse 12. In Vers 12. In fact, let's begin in verse 11. Beginnen wir in Vers 11. It says, for thus... Saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep, that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and feed them on the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them any good what? Pasture. And upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold and a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. Amen? Amen. So the shepherds, right here, they have nothing to feed their flocks. So they're brought into this land and they're given this land so that they can feed the flock, right? So, for thy servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore we pray thee, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee. The land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land, make thy father and brethren to dwell. So what land were they given? Best in the whole of Egypt, right? <laughs> okay. And if thou knewest any men of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. What do you become? Over the sheep, you become a shepherd over the sheep, right? You become this ruler. Also, du wirst zu diesem Hirten über die Schafe, du wirst zu diesem um, Herrn. But only if you carry the wooden 
yoke, right? Aber nur wenn du eben dieses seltene Joch trägst. If you take that wooden yoke off, it's going to become all bad, right? Wenn du dieses seltene Joch abnimmst, dann wird alles schlecht. And did the did the Jews do that? Yes. Haben das die Juden gemacht? They started marrying strange wives and they forgot God. Ja, sie haben das gemacht. Sie haben angefangen, fremde Frauen zu heiraten und haben Gott vergessen. Because what did they do? Und das haben sie gemacht. They built houses. They had many children and they grew gardens, right? And they enjoyed they enjoyed Egypt so much that they didn't want to leave it, right? Und sie haben Häuser gebaut und Kinder bekommen. Sie haben einfach sich an Ägypten so sehr gefreut, dass sie es nicht mehr verlassen wollten. And brothers and sisters, the Lord is talking about our sinful hearts, right? Und liebe Geschwister, der Herr spricht da über unser sündhaftes Herz. Go to Exodus uh, 1 and verse 8. Gehen wir zu 2. Mose 1 und Vers 8. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Right? So, all the illustrations of the Bible is what Christ took. He took the Old Testament and he illustrated everything in his experience. Right? And Christus hat ja all diese Darstellungen aus der Bibel eben entnommen. So what you have is, they entered into this land of, this land of Goshen, this beautiful land. And they forgot God and then this Pharaoh got risen up and this great trial came upon them, right? Okay, so let's look at that illustration. Go to Matthew chapter 4. And verse 1. And Matthew chapter 4 is marking the point from when Christ gets baptized. So once he's baptized, he's now filled with the Spirit. It says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the what? The wilderness, right? Now, What's the wilderness? Right, the 1260, where you're nourished for a time, times, and half a time, right? Und nach der Taufe wird eben Christus in diese Wildnis oder diese Wüste gebracht und das eben, wo du genährt wirst in diese 1260. Okay, so, uh, was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward unhungered, right? So this time period here would be these 40 days, right? Also diese Zeit hier wäre dann, wären dann diese 40 Tage. Then who comes to him? Wer kommt dann zu ihm? The tempter. Der Versucher. It's all going to change, right? Es ändert sich nun. So Christ is illustrating this whole point, this, you're in this wilderness, Fasting and Satan is going to come and tempt you because he, he knows our hearts, right? So where does the tempter come? Right here, right? So prophetically speaking, why does this happen? Prophetisch gesprochen, warum passiert das? Why does the Lord allow Satan to come to you right there? Warum erlaubt es der Herr, dass der Satan zu dir kommt? What's the purpose of this? Was ist der Zweck davon? Sorry? To, to separate the classes, right? Also um diese Klassen zu trennen. Because the people that go in the land right here, whose hearts, who take off the wooden yoke, and start planting their feet on this earth, he's going to sift you out right here, right? Then these Menschen, die eben hier in das Land eingehen, aber dann das Holz in der Joch dann ablegen und ja sich dann pflanzen sozusagen auf dieser Erde, die werden eben hier raus gesichtet. Because many false prophets are going to rise up and say, "We've already been delivered, right? Look how the Lord is prospering us." Blah blah blah, and people are going to take off that wooden yoke and many who come in here 
are going to be deceived in this time period, right? Denn es kommen dann falsche Propheten auf und die sagen halt, ja, wir sind schon befreit und schon am Ende, weil schau, gut es uns geht. Und sie werden eben viele dazu verführen, dass sie dieses hölzerne Joch dann ablegen. Right? So, this was this, I didn't quite understand it, but when we were looking at Matthew 24, what's the first thing Christ says? Und in Matthäus 24, was ist das Erste, was Christus sagt? Be not deceived. And where is he talking about? Und über was spricht er? The beginning of the 1260, right? Er, beginnt, äh, er spricht eben über diesen Anfang von der 1260. Right? So in one sense, it's here, but in another sense, when you take in this illustration, he's talking about right here, when Judas gets raised up, he's going to deceive many people to take off that yoke and they're going to get sifted out right here, right? In den einen Sinne, Sinne spricht es eben über hier, das ist ein Anfang mit 1260, aber andererseits auch hier, wo eben ja, dieser Judas aufkommt und eben vielen sagen wird, dass sie das Hölzene ja auch ablegen sollen und dann viele eben hier rausgesichtet werden. Okay, so the Lord's using this 1260 to represent two different experiences, right? Also der Herr benutzt diese 1260, um eben zwei Arten von Erfahrungen so, in one sense, it's your fiery trial from beginning to end, but in another sense, you have this wonderful experience at the beginning, but this warning, don't take off that yoke, lest this comes back upon you, right? Und einerseits ist das eben diese, diese Zeit der Trübsal, diese Erfahrung, die du hast, und andererseits dieses, diese wunderbare Zeit eben, aber wo auch die Warnung an dich ergeht, dass du dieses hölzerne der Joch nicht ablegen sollst, weil das dann auf dich kommt. Yes, that, that's what the, the whole purpose of the Christ coming to the earth was, right? Und dieses hölzerne Joch ist halt auch diese Verantwortlichkeit, die wir eben haben, diese verlorenen Schafe zu suchen. And if you just go back and remember when we studied the little time of peace, the pioneers understood that when this time of peace comes, it was to, the last opportunity to get this warning message to the world before the final trouble came, right? The seven last plagues. And we have also seen studies, the pioneers say that it's always this time of peace, this last opportunity to get this warning message to the world before the seven last plagues come. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's Amen. close with prayer. And I pray that you may help every one of us to um, hold fast to these promises. And I pray that you even from us help that we fast hold on these promises. And that we may um, not lose hope that we receive um, these things. And that we diese Hoffnung haben, dass wir diese Dinge erhalten. Bitte hilf uns, um, ja, zu wachen, dass wir nicht um, fallen. Und bitte fahre fort, uns zu segnen und uns zu gründen in diesem Wort. Und ich danke dir in Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen.